Airplanes often do better at higher altitudes. They can cruise faster and burn less fuel and can climb above weather conditions that prevail further down. Pilots, though, and their human passengers don't do as well at high altitude. Thinner air means we're susceptible to hypoxia, and at lower pressure, our lungs don't work as well contracting and expanding. We can use onboard oxygen systems like masks, or we could seal off the entire cabin and pump air into it like a balloon, keeping the pressure levels comparable to lower, more breathable altitudes. Here's how aircraft pressurization works, taking the Pilatus PC-12 as an example. In the cowling of the aircraft sits a turbine engine. This engine is fed by a series of air scoops or intakes facing front. The air is fed to a turbocharger, which as we learned about in the module on turbo aircraft, compresses air for combustion. What we're gonna do is have some of that compressed air bypass the engine and not be used for combustion. This is called bleed air. The bleed air has been compressed. Anytime we push molecules of air together, they start rubbing up against each other more and get very hot. If we're going to introduce this air into the cabin, it has to be cooled down to a comfortable temperature. This is done by channeling the bleed air into a heat exchanger where colder outside air is used to cool down the bleed air. The cooled air is then ducted into the cabin through a series of outlets. There are forward air outlets which can be up top on the cabin and floor outlets typically at the pilot's feet. Larger aircraft like the Pilatus will also duck some air towards the passenger compartments in the back. What happens inside the cabin can be thought of like blowing up or letting air out of a big balloon. That air is being ducted into the cabin through those outlets. The cabin is sealed, so if we just kept blowing up the balloon, eventually the pressure would get too high and we'd pop. So we need to let some of the air out at the same time. This is done through the outflow valve, ducting air back outside from the cabin. So to increase air pressure, we want to have more air coming in through the bleed air than we have air going out through the outflow valve. So as long as this is the case, pressure increases. To decrease pressure, we start letting more air out the outflow valve. As you might have guessed, when we're up at altitude, there's going to be a big difference between the pressure inside the cabin, which makes us feel like we're at a comfortable altitude somewhere below 10,000 feet, and the outside or ambient air pressure, which is much lower up in the flight levels. This difference, or differential pressure, is an important thing to keep track of. If we blow up our balloon too much, and the differential pressure is too high, we could stress the fuselage as all that high pressure air tries to escape. In an emergency, like if there are fumes or smoke in the cabin, we may want to purge the cabin air back outside quickly. This is what the safety or dump valve is for. With a control in the cockpit, we can quickly dump the air back outside and equalize the pressure in the cabin. As you can imagine, this is not an ideal situation. Rapid decompression like this causes the pressure to equalize in just a few seconds and exposes us to very low pressure air to breathe. Useful consciousness can only last about 10 or 15 seconds up at altitude, so getting oxygen masks on quickly is a must. As bad as this is, it's not quite the same as explosive decompression, where some structural damage causes all the air to blow out of the cabin in just a second or two. In this case, the lungs aren't able to decompress fast enough and can lead to damage. Let's have a look at operating the cabin pressurization system from the cockpit of the Pilatus. We're on the ground at Tri-Cities in Washington, close to sea level. Have a look over to the co-pilot side and you'll see the controls and instrumentation for the ECS, Environmental Control System. Apart from providing cabin pressure, this system can also control the temperature inside the cabin. After engine start, the ECS rocker switch is typically switched to the auto position. The two round dial instruments will give us information on cabin pressure as well as differential pressure. For now, let's look at the round dial to the right of those, which is what we'll use to actually set cabin pressure. Prior to takeoff, we'll want to set this to our assigned cruise altitude. Let's say we've been cleared to flight level 190, 19,000 feet. We'll turn the dial until that inner ring reads 19 at the 12 o'clock position. And typically, we want to actually set 500 feet above this to give ourselves a buffer. Remember our concern with differential pressure. If we blow up our balloon too much, a sudden increase in altitude could cause that differential to get too high. Now, with the inner ring set just above 19,000 feet, notice the outer ring, which represents our cabin altitude, is at just above 5,500 feet. When we start bringing bleed air into the cabin and blowing up the balloon, the pressure we're setting for will be equivalent to that at around 5,500 feet elevation on a standard day. Very livable. So that's all set. We're going to take off and climb unrestricted to our cruise altitude and monitor these pressurization instruments as we do. 
We're going to climb at around 2,000 feet per minute, so our climb will take around 9 minutes. Once we're off and begin climbing, notice the cabin climb rate indicator begins showing a positive rate. The air pressure is getting thinner inside the cabin, but it's not dropping at the same rate as the outside air pressure. While our true climb rate is 2,000 feet per minute, the cabin is experiencing a drop in pressure equivalent to a 500 foot per minute climb. We could control this with the small knob of the arrow on it on the cabin controller dial to increase or decrease the rate. Anything higher than 1,000 feet per minute a cabin climb is bound to give the passenger some discomfort. If the cabin climb rate was the same as the actual climb rate, we'd know we weren't pressurizing the cabin properly. The system manages this slower cabin climb rate by pumping more air into the cabin than we're losing through the outflow valve. We could see this on the instrument above the cabin climb dial. This one is telling us two things. The outer ring indicated by the long skinny needle is showing us our cabin pressure altitude. Again, what altitude the pressure makes us feel like we're at. This will be slowly climbing to our preset level of 5,500. The inner ring with the short fat needle is showing us the differential pressure, the difference between the pressure inside and outside. Remember that as we blow up the balloon, that differential pressure gets greater. The placard above it says we should avoid a cabin differential pressure of 5.75 pounds per square inch or more. Going over max diff, as it said, would happen if we were at a very high altitude but wanted a relatively low cabin pressure, which would require us to blow up the balloon too much for this aircraft. So even with pressurization, there's only so low we can make the cabin feel like it's at without stressing the airframe. That max diff is indicated by the yellow arc on the inner ring and the red line. So as we level off at flight level 190, we see that our cabin pressure is just approaching 5,000 feet. We're not quite at our set cabin pressure altitude of 5,500 feet. We've leveled off so the outside air pressure isn't changing, but inside we're still getting slowly less dense, so the differential will start to drop a bit. This is giving us a nice buffer below that yellow arc. And a few minutes later, we reach our set cabin pressure altitude and we stop blowing up the balloon. The cabin climb sets back to zero. So now we're at flight level 190. What would happen if we set a cabin pressure altitude too low? Instead of 5,500 feet, we'll turn the control and set 4,000 feet along the outside. This would be appropriate for cruising at 17,000 feet as you can see on the inner ring, not flight level 190. Once again, in order to make the cabin feel like it's at a lower altitude, we'll need to blow the balloon up. This will cause our differential pressure to increase. Watch that short fat needle move. Getting to a cabin pressure altitude of 4,000 feet may be more comfortable for us inside, but we're just underneath that max diff on the yellow arc. What happens now if we were either to climb or twist the dial to an even lower cabin pressure altitude would be that the system begins to bring in even more air to the cabin, but there's a safety feature that won't allow us to go past max diff, 5.75 psi. If we do, the safety valve automatically vents more air outside, preventing us from getting to those low cabin pressure altitudes. Notice the cabin climb drops back to zero, well before we reach that set level of below 2,500 feet. In the event of certain emergencies, we might want to dump the cabin air. This would be done with a rocker switch protected by that spring-loaded safety catch. If we open it and hit dump, we let all the balloon out of the air at once. In the course of about 10 seconds, we go from a low cabin pressure altitude to one equivalent to our actual altitude of 19,000 feet. Very hard to get any oxygen at all up here. The cabin climb rate has shot off the dial well over 4,000 feet per minute, so there'll be extreme discomfort in popped eardrums. That differential pressure drops to zero as we equalize pressure inside and out. Normally, we'd be donning the masks now and starting an emergency descent down to lower altitudes. Now that we're ready to begin a descent into our destination, we'll want to see how to set up our pressurization for that phase. We're going into Helena, an elevation about 4,000 feet. What we'll do here is when we've initiated our descent, set our cabin altitude to 500 feet above the elevation, so 4,500 feet. What this does is allows the cabin to depressurize completely when our actual altitude is 4,500 feet. In other words, before we touch down on the ground. As the placard says up top, we need to make sure the cabin is depressurized before landing, and this is how we make sure of this. As we descend, the system pushes more air into the cabin to create the lower altitude, but because we're only showing a cabin descent rate of 500 feet per minute, and our actual descent rate is faster, the air outside is getting denser at a faster rate too. So we see the differential starting to drop. Yeah, we're blowing up the balloon, but by losing altitude, we're in a sense blowing up the outside air too. 
we reached the desired cabin altitude of 4,500 pretty quickly. And now we're not blowing up the balloon at all anymore. We descend into ever denser air until we actually reach 4,500 feet and the pressure equalizes inside and out. The differential drops to zero and we're okay to land. Your first job as a commercial pilot is likely to be in a pressurized aircraft. You'll learn the systems for your particular plane inside and out, but these are the general basics of how a cabin pressurization system works. 